Let's see how to develop the logic of Chrome extension with Windsurf. So today let's see how to build all the logic for a Chrome extension application. This is the third video I do about how to create applications with AI. We started with UX Pilot and Figma building all the screens. Then with V0 and Tray, we build the HTML and CSS. And now the Chrome extension looks like that one. So we have all the HTML and CSS. And today I want to show you some things. First of all, I want to show you how it's work at the end. Then show you how I developed the logic for the application, the step I took to develop it. Why I switch from Tray to Windsurf, the importance to work step by step, some problem solving methods that I used to overcome some bugs that I had during the development. And at the end, I want to show you some benefits to work with Windsurf. So first of all, let's see how the application works at the end. I'm here on YC page in one startup called Alguna and they offer a role from lead product designer. And if I want to apply, basically I click here on add role and I have here some fields that I need to fill. So I click on the extension, select one data set, in that case, personal info, click on fill form and you will see that everything is filled. Basically, this is the functionality and the user can go here to setting if they want to edit the information, if they want to add field or eliminate it, they can go back and they have more than one data set they can use. So this is how it's work. Now, how I develop it. Basically, when I had the HTML and CSS, I started to work step by step in Tray. If you don't know Tray, Tray is software development application. That's one. And I started to build it here. And I did it step by step. For example, I had all the CSS. Okay. And I say to it, okay, now the bottom fill form needs to fill all the forms in certain page. And after that, I explain to the AI, if I click on setting, I go to the second screen when I can edit or eliminate data set. And if I click on the pencil, I can edit the data set. And this is the way I did it, step by step by step. Now, it's very important to know that also when you start to develop, the AI will understand some of the things that you want to do because basically in the prompt, you write what you want to achieve, application that fill forms. So sometimes it will start to generate the code for you without asking. But in any case, when you work with AI, you need to be focused, always be focused, always develop one functionality. And that's what developer said to me when I work with him. He said to me, Edward, always work step by step and always check the step you did. And the same way I apply here, I ask the AI to develop one functionality, test it and go to the second one. I don't do it in one step. Although maybe in the future we'll able to do in one step, for example, add all the PRD to the AI and it will understand how to do it step by step. Still, we are not there. You need to do it step by step because it's super important to make tests. You don't know what the AI will do, especially for people that do not know how to code because developers can enter to the code and understand it and fix manually. But if you're not a developer and you don't know how to read and how to write code, you need to do it step by step and then check that the machine did the work you asked. Now, the second thing that I want to talk is about the application that developed the core extension. I start to trade that it's great application. It's free. It's used Sonnet 3.7, so the most advanced, and you can use it, no pay. The problem is that in certain way, when I start to develop, it didn't give me a fast access to the AI models and I needed to wait. And then I download Windsurf and start to iterate with that. This is the interface of Windsurf, okay? And basically it's the same. So when I've stopped to work with Ray, I, start, I came here, it's worked the same way. And I start to iterate and fix the bugs. And as I said, work step by step and also solve problems step by step. And here is an example. I said here to the AI, perfect, you are amazing. Now let's solve another issue. When there is a form, I select the data set, but when I click on fill form, it doesn't work. Can you fix it? So I explained to the machine how to solve an issue step by step in the same way I explained how to develop it. And then it started to give me some result. And after that, what happened? I said it, it's not work. I said, I opened the console and it gave me this error. So here is another tip. When you have a problem, open the console and paste the error here in Windsurf on tray or cursor if you would like to use it. And then the AI will understand how to solve the issue. Now, if you don't know what is the inspect, basically here when we're in the browse, you can right click on the mouse click inspect and then here you have console and all the errors are there so you can copy and paste the error that you have here to the AI software that write the code and ask it to fix this bug and now when you work with chrome extension also when you open the extension you can click here right click inspect and here you get another console focus only 
on the Chrome extension. So if the Chrome extension has bugs, you will see it here. And if there is some page or connection between the extension and the website, you will see it here. In my case, I started with the plugin, best theory bug that came from the plugin, ask to fix it. And then another things that I did, I continued to iterate and it didn't work. So what I asked the AI to do, it's to ask me how the plugin works because I didn't write out the code. Maybe the AI add steps or flows that I'm not aware of. So it, I asked it to explain me how to use the plugin. And that's quite interesting that the AI explained me how the plugin works on how to use it. And it's explained me and it was no surprise. I mean, it developed it exactly as I think that it needs to be. So that was not the problem. The next thing that I did, I opened the browser console and copy from there the errors. You can see it here and ask to fix it. It didn't work. So what I did next or part of that, I copy from the Chrome extension, the fields with the information. You can see here the fields that I added in the Chrome extension. So the AI will understand where is the problem. For one side, I have the fields that I added and the other side, they have the bugs in the console. So I thought that it's resolved the problem. And at the end, it solved all the issue and now the plugin works. So basically that was all the process. First, design a new UX pilot, then develop the HTML and CSS with V0 and work with Ray to create all the Chrome extension files. And then with Winesurf, work on the functionality and fix the bugs. The last thing that I want to talk about, it's Winesurf that uh, basically I started to work with it today. I download it, start to iterate, and then all my credit finish, all the free credit. So I pay $15 for the app to use it. And one of the things that I like in this app that here when I select the model, it's explained me how credit I will use for each model. You can see here the Cloud 3.7 Sonat, the thinking one cost 1.25 credit. But if I use DeepSeek R1, it's 0 0.5. And if I use Gemini 2.0, it's 0.25 credits. There is another model called Cascade Base that it's free. I mean, it's not use any credit. You can see it here. And that's one of the things that I like in this product. So I can understand how much cost each call I send to the AI model. Now, a part of that, just let you know, you have here two ways to interact with the chat. One is to write the code. Another one is to chat if you want to ask something. So when I ask it to explain how the Chrome extension works, I use the chat and also, I use the model that it's free because I don't need power there. I don't, I just need that it will explain me the code. And in that case, base model will be enough. I don't need something like O3 mini or something like that. So that's how I developed this Chrome extension. If you like this video, please subscribe and like and share it with other people. So more people will understand how to develop applications without code. And if you have comments, drop them down. I'm always happy to respond to you and study from you people. And thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Take care.